welcome to another episode of the Z Fashionista Show. We are back bringing you that excellence, that opulence, that decadence. It is the 2nd of July, which means the school year is over. It's summer in the United Kingdom. It's a bit on the winter rich side here in the Southern Hemisphere in South Africa, but you know it's all good. Today I'm going to bring you a video about the first year of my PhD, how I made it through the first year of my PhD and I'm out on the other side. It's important to know in order to pass that first year in Cambridge, in order to make it to the second year of your PhD at Cambridge, in order to be really registered as a PhD student at Cambridge, you need to hand in four things for your registration exercise, which is that big thing at the end of the first year of your PhD, that whole thing where you have a supervisor not a supervisor, you actually have your advisor. So it's two separate things in the United Kingdom. It's your supervisor who actually helps you directly with your research. And you have an advisor, which is another person that you choose in the department to basically assist you, yes, with your PhD, but also with PhD life in general. So you have your advisor in the first year and someone else from the department and you hand in these specific four things to them and they assess those four things and they decide whether you should make it through to the second year of your PhD and really be registered as a PhD student at Cambridge. Or they decide whether maybe you should resubmit all of those documents because you're not happy with how you have written things or the standard at which you're writing or they feel like you should do things differently or you get put back into like master's year so that's like really really bad that's kind of like you failed the exercise and if that happens they're basically saying you're just on ready for a phd life at all so that's what happened okay so first thing that i want to talk about is the phd log Okay, so the PhD log, uh, so what I did is that basically it's important when you're at the University of Cambridge as a first year PhD to go to many things. So you can't just like hide in your room and not ever go to anything. You need to be in the department, you know, really soaking in the academic culture at Cambridge so you can see what you like, just to, you know, really make the most of your time at Cambridge. So what I did in the beginning of the year, they had a couple of like um, how to supervise workshops or whatever. I went to those workshops and then you list those in your PhD and then you can say this person ran the workshop on this date how did I find the specific workshop so I did that I also went to a workshop um, which is like so you'll get these emails like university-wide emails that tell you about like different training courses that are happening so they'll tell you that that um let's say there's a training course on how to pass a PhD in general and it's open to all PhD students throughout the university and they say okay so this um this um course is run by this person on this date all you have to do is click on this link and you register and you go to the course and you like a like a one day thing or like four hour thing where they speak about okay so in the beginning of your PhD plan how you're going to do your PhD whatever so you list um those training courses like that so it's important to make sure that you go to training courses things that tell you how to write an abstract for a conference things that tell you how to write um a chapter for your thesis things that tell you how to cope with PhD things that tell you how to research as in how to find like sources for your articles whatever all of those things it's important to go to those things and then to write about them in your PhD log. Make sure every time you do something that you write about in your PhD log and it's not like at the end of the year, like the year is from October to June. Now at the end of June, like you're running through your phone to look at what you attended, just like write everything as you attended so that you have to write like retrospectively, oh, I went here, this is what we spoke about, whatever. As you do something, write about how you did the thing and how it went there and then. So first thing I would say is to go to those training things so you have some of them in your log. The second thing that they look at is reading groups and seminars that you went to. So now my PhD, by the way, is an HPS at the University of Cambridge, which is History and Philosophy of Science. So I'm going to speak specifically about the types of things that I went to there. But I think this should apply to whichever department that you're in if they have those specific things in that department. So in terms of seminars and reading groups, like we have seminars, but you need to go to seminars that are relevant to you as well. It's not just about like filling the log with numbers or you know like dates that you went to this and the other things that have absolutely nothing to do with your PhD this is about your growth as well so um, I would think about things that interest you but things that are obviously relevant to your PhD in terms of reading groups and seminars that you go to and now the reading groups and seminars that you go to the ones that are important are obviously ones that are in, in your department but you can also list ones that, ones that aren't in your department that you went to but that are somehow related to or important to your research and so in the HPS department, we had reading groups like uh, philosophy of medicine. We had reading groups like, um, let's say, philosophy of biology. And then we had seminars, departmental seminars every Wednesday where people from like scholars from all over the world will come and present whatever topic that they want to uh, present. And then we had, um, no, actually we had philosophy of medicine on 
Tuesdays and I had another reading group that I went to on Mondays which was the intersection of race, gender and disability and then there was uh, on Wednesday there was Campos which is like philosophy of science like a reading group uh, or a seminar series on philosophy of science and then on Thursday there was the departmental seminars so this this, was a, this will combine history and philosophy of science and scholars from around the world come and present their work and they could be historians and they could be philosophers of science the difference between that and the other ones I mentioned is the other ones are specific philosophy based so HPS is quite a unique department in the sense that it's basically the intersection of history and philosophy of science so it's in um what happened on Thursday the departmental seminars sometimes it was historians sometimes it was philosophers of science and then on Friday there would be something called like um coffee with scientists where scientists would come and speak let's say for example about their research about scientific publishing about the perils of scientific publishing something like that so what happened was that basically monday to thursday it was possible for me to be going to a reading group or a seminar every single day and um, there's seven weeks in a term so basically you have four times seven things that you can are able to put into your log um i would say like i went to it's important to go to as many things as possible but it's also possible to fill up your week with just going to things and not actually doing your research so go to things so that they can see that you've been like attending things that you are part of the phd life and stuff but make sure that those things aren't like interfering with your research so i would go monday i would go to the intersection of race gender and disability i'm interested in philosophy of race and that was really a different reading group and it was a reading group that i really enjoyed and so i went to that pretty often and then on Tuesday, we had philosophy of medicine. Um, my PhD is generally in philosophy of medicine. So that was something that was important to go to itself. And, you know, I went to a couple of those. Campos on Thursdays. Now, this is like philosophy of science in general. That's obviously a really important thing to go to. So even though your um, research might be in philosophy of physics, it's just important to go to like Campos or something like that, where it's philosophy of science in general, in order to know what people are speaking about in general in the field. So I also went to a couple of those. And then the departmental cinema seminars are also something that's important to go to. And then I would also go to something called, as I said, coffee with scientists. So all of those things, I would say it's important to go to maybe two or three of those things per week every single week in each of the three terms so we have three terms of seven weeks each so each week you should be going to these things at least two to three times a week i think that's important and that's what i did so the second thing that you're gonna need to pass or how i pass the second thing is my um let me speak about the chapter itself before i speak about the thesis plan so i said you have to hand in a ten thousand word chapter to your advisor and to your assessors basically which will be your advisor as well as one person from your, your department so um you have to think about now you have to know exactly what it is that you're going to be speaking about so what i would have done differently in that is that i only actually started so the phd started in october and it ends in like june july but i only really started writing my um 10 000 word chapter in like february or not even february like march or april type of thing so i left myself like two to three months or two months to be writing this um chapter so don't do that like think about the chapter from the jump and make sure that you're handing in like regular drafts so i had handed in like maybe four drafts to my supervisor by the time i handed in my final draft to my advisor and the person who was assessing my phd but um chapter but i would say like hands in drafts from the jump like from the jump concentrate on your um concentrate on this 10,000 words that you're going to hand in but there was a reason for that it's not like I was just coasting for the first six months um, we were handing in like a paper for the PSA which is the philosophy of science um, philosophy of science association in America like a paper for that so what I was doing in those first couple of months is like I was reworking one of my chapters for a master's dissertation in order to hand it in for this PSA thing so that's the reason why I was focusing on my old work instead of my new work I would say focus on your new work and just focus on your chapter and make sure that you have that down basically Basically. and so but anyway i wrote my chapter and i handed in several drafts to my supervisor so making that you, make sure that you hand in several drafts to your supervisor before you actually hand the thing in so not only did we hand in several drafts to the supervisor to my supervisor but we also had group a group meeting where we discussed each of our chapters how to improve the chapters what people thought about our chapters like so that feedback is also important whether that's feedback with regards to your chapter or with regards to an article that you're going to write whatever that feedback is important so I would say just give yourself time enough time in order to have that feedback um, 
and also in your chapter by the way remember i said um or as you would know in a, a thesis plan or in a phd for example or in a lo long project uh, academic project so you can have a chapter like an introduction so an introduction is basically where you're just introducing things or you could have a chapter that's like a literature review where you're basically just surveying the literature on a particular topic that could be a chapter but i think what they care about um what your assessors care about is not just some random chapter. They actually want a chapter in which, this is philosophy by the way, so a chapter in which you're literally arguing something. So a chapter that could basically stand alone as an article in a journal. So you need to be sure that the chapter that you're handing in is not just like something where you're surveying the literature or where you're saying, oh, this person said this, this person said that, whatever. This has to be a chapter where you're putting forth an argument. So there's two, there are several different ways to think about a PhD. You can think about a PhD um, as something where, let's say in the, you have these chapters where you're surveying the literature and then towards the end, you're going to bring in some new arguments, or you can have a PhD where you're actually arguing in each chapter. So basically like it's like a, you're putting together threads where, you know, as a whole, you have all of these um, several arguments and these several different chapters and they come together to make this bigger argument. But I would say that the chapter that you consider to hand in for your registration exercise should be one in which you are doing some arguing, in which you're showing some originality, some original thought, um, you know, original viewpoint, original questioning, that type of thing. So I don't think they won't be happy if you're just surveying the literature. Make sure that the chapter that you hand in um, in your first year is somewhere where you're arguing, showing how you're going to be original, that type of thing. That's super important. Okay, so the other thing that you have to hand in is your uh, thesis plan so as i said your thesis plan is basically where you spell out in this chapter i'm going to do in chapter one i will say this in chapter two i will say this in chapter three i will say this as i said before these are these are things that you need to have thought about like a long time ago um you can't just like fly into your registration exercise like writing all of these several things that you have to hand in your, in your registration exercise you can't be thinking about those things in may so registration exercises in general happen in june so towards the end of the year, uh, towards the end of the last term at Cambridge, what is the last term? It's, I think it's called Lent. Is it called Lent or is it called Easter? Whatever the last term is called in Cambridge, that's when uh, the exercises happen, like May, June. Um, but also you choose to, you choose when you want to have your registration exercise. So you contact your advisor and whoever else in the department that you want to assess you. And you ask them and you tell them, okay, I want to have my registration exercise, let's say on the 15th of June. That, that's when mine was. And you make sure that they're available, you ask both people and they agree, and you make sure that you hand in all of those documents like at least a week before, so you give them time to read the thing and to give you proper feedback. So that's when this happens. So in your thesis plan, you basically spell out, you need to know in chapter one, I will say this, I will talk about this specific theorist who said this at this time and I will disagree in this way. So you say chapter one is called introduction. This is what I'm going to say there. Chapter two is called what is personalized medicine or chapter two is called um, personalized medicine and evidence-based medicine. And I'm going to talk about what personalized medicine is and how it intersects or uh, how different it is or is not different from evidence-based medicine, whatever. So you need to be really specific about what you're going to talk about in each chapter the theorists that you're going to be talking about you're going to have to have like a literal reference list referencing all of those articles and in there you're showing that you've actually read the work and you actually know what you're talking about it's not just like some random thing where you're like i've absolutely no idea and you're guessing like because it's at the end of the first year of your phd now you need to know what it is that you actually want to say and also so I had all of those things. I had like six or seven chapters and I said what, what I was going to do in each chapter. And I said the theories that I'm going to look at. Um, so you also have to need like, you need to have like a really, a real good grasp of what it is that you want to say and how you plan on like speaking about the specific topic to make sure that you're covering several things. So if you're speaking about something controversial or let's say me, I'm talking about personalized medicine. Like I can't have a, a dissertation about personalized medicine and not talk about the ethical side of personalized medicine, for example. So I needed to have a chapter um, where I speak about a specific ethical topic on personalized medicine. But again, the chapter needs to be original. So it has to be something that hasn't been said before. So maybe a specific like new ethical topic on uh, personalized medicine that other people haven't thought of before. For, and then I'm going to talk about this specific issue in personalized medicine. So you need to have a really good grasp of what your thesis is, what you want to say, and all of the necessary things that are important that you have to say in order to really um, have a worthwhile original thesis. You also need to have a thesis plan. So that's what I did. I sat down and I thought, how do I write? How quickly do I write? Or what is realistic for me? If I say 
I need to complete three chapters. It might take a year for me to complete those three chapters and I'll say, okay, in this term, I'm going to work in this chapter and this other term, I'm going to work on this other chapter. In the last term, I'm going to work on that other chapter. So you spell out like literally the date. By this date, I will have done this. I will have done that. So I think that's pretty important for a thesis plan. And I think also in a thesis plan, it's also important to motivate the thesis. So you can have like literally like saying chapter one, I'm going to do this, chapter two, I'm going to do this, whatever. Then your thesis, um, like a time scale. So you'll say in January, I'll do this, in March, I'll do this, whatever. And then also at the beginning of all of these things, motivate that thing and say, why should people care about this thesis of mine? So um, sometimes philosophy or academia is like some esoteric exercise, like something from some ivory tower when you're just writing all of these weird things. You can't just write like about a random topic. It has to be something that people could care about or something that's worthwhile. So what is worthwhile about what it is that you're saying? So I think that's important to say in your thesis plan. So the last thing that's important for your PhD is the registration document itself. So in the registration document, as I said, this is where you're going to talk about the thesis, how you're going to answer the question. So you need to obviously has, have a really good grasp of what it is that you want to say. So in your thesis, you'll say, okay, my topic is the prospects of personalized medicine or whatever specific question that you have. And you're going to say, my thesis is this. A thesis is very specific. It's not something vague or whatever. It's where you're saying, this is how I am going to answer the question. You're going to have to say in there, what's original about what you're saying. So how is, let's say there are three other people who have ha who have written about this specific topic. How is what you're going to say different? And one way to delineate the, the difference from other people is to say, okay, um, person A has said this about this. Person B has said this about this. Person C has said this about this. In contrast, I will say D about this. You know, just delineate and say how it is that you are different. Or you can say person A thought about this thing in this way. Person B thought about this thing in that way. Um, I agree with them in this point, but I disagree with them on that point. So that's how my thing is original. So that whole original originality is super important. And that's the cornerstone basically of a PhD. And then you're going to speak about what you've done throughout the year. So you're going to say, okay, on the 18th of June, I spoke at this conference. You're going to say, um, oh, in July, I'll be speaking at the British Society for the Philosophy of Science conference. Or you're going to say, um, I don't know, in June, I'm going to the summer school in uh, Germany on the philosophy of mathematics, something like that. So you spell out what you've done in the year. And you also have to talk about what you want to done, what you want to do going forward. So you're going to say maybe in the year coming up, I want to now supervise a science and society paper. I want to supervise a logic paper, whatever. So you're going to say, what is it that you've done throughout this year? And what is it that you want to do in the next year? And then you're going to have to talk about what, what kind of support do you need from the department? So you can say, I would like for the department to help us more and uh, preparing us for academic life so the department can have more seminars about how to approach like possible referees so when you're actually on the job market have the department help you in like how do you when you're still in your phd years how do you approach people that can help you with your career going forward people who can be referees for you um i would like my department to help me with regards to how to write articles better so you say all of those things so these are all i can say about that is that these are things that you need to think about way before these are kind of, it can't be just like in june where you're not thinking about what it is that i need to do for my phd the last thing i want to talk about in general is how phd life is in cambridge so um i think it's different because the infills at Cambridge, which are the master's program, are like nine months. And in those nine months, you still have coursework and you only have like a couple of essays here and there, but you're not really used to writing a big 80,000 word PhD um, thesis. Like what is going to be required of you in your PhD. Um, and so, um, whereas I had the experience of having a master's, um, a research master's where I had to hand in a 45,000 word master's um dissertation so i'm used to writing long projects and the thing with writing long projects is that those things are it's basically a lot of independent work so when you're doing your phd you need to be someone who is used to working independently and you need to be someone who's used to motivating themselves and you need to be someone who's used to you know researching you for yourself finding out um whatever's being spoken about or, you know whatever conference is going on you need to be used to working independently in that sense um 
in a way, it's also isolating in the sense that uh, so many people are working on way different projects. And um, you just, I think it would be helpful to meet regularly with people who are, like we have our group meetings with our, with our supervisor, we regularly discuss like, oh, what is it that you're doing? Um, what is it that's being said? Um, what are our plans for the summer? That kind of thing. So just make sure that you regularly meet either with your PhD cohort or with, um, if your supervisor has like five students, make sure that you guys meet and you speak about what it is that you're doing and where it is that you are at um and then in terms of like it's just important to have like be forward thinking thinking about like what it is that, that that you want your phd to do for you and then be sure that you do those things whilst you're doing your phd because a phd goes by so fast it's like three or four years to the united kingdom you need to have been done you need to have done a lot in order to be ready for like the job market so if you want to experience life in the united states like i want to for example think about maybe spending a term in a, like a university in the united states and see how good that might be for you you know that that might help you in order to expose you to different thoughts different ways of supervising a different like school of thought or a different like culture of a university that type of things so think about like what it is that you want your phd to do for you and what is that you should be doing through throughout your PhD at Cambridge. Um, also, I think it's important to like go to things like conferences. So I think um, if you're wanting to be an academic, it's important obviously that you've been to a conference that you're able to present. It's important that you're able to like be a lecturer. Like, So I'm lucky in the sense that I've lectured before, but if you haven't, at Cambridge, there's the opportunities to supervise. So you supervise like first year students, second year students, third year students. So make sure that you take that opportunity to supervise. You learn how do you supervise. And so supervisions are basically like a groups of like three or five Five students or whatever and you basically mark as a supervisor you mark their essays and you just encourage them to think about things in this way or that way or you question them that type of thing so that's quite an important um skill to develop um at cambridge in terms of like nurturing that lecturing ability so that's important but that all depends upon what you want your phd to do for you so i'd say if you want to pass your phd at cambridge or how i passed my phd at cambridge is that i really focused on those four things so i thought about what it was that was being assessed and i made sure that i ticked all of the boxes at that regard I made sure that I attended things regularly. I made sure that I wrote down what I was doing regularly. I made sure that I thought about what it is that my thesis actually was, what it would look like, um, what it is that I want my PhD to do, to do for me. And I did those things. And yeah, just let me know if you have any other questions about how to pass your first year and your PhD, about PhD life in general. Also, the last thing, um, as a whole that I want to say about your PhD life is you'll find that as a PhD student your life is basically more in your department in Cambridge versus your life at college so what what's important in your PhD life is at Cambridge is what happens in your department and not like what happens in your college and stuff so that's the difference whereas I think in um like undergrad years your life or where you're taught where you're supervised in college whereas in PhD life it's more of you know what happens to the department these seminars that type of thing so just think about that but it's important to know like which college you're going to be at, at and how that will affect your life um so for me what i would do differently is i would definitely do choose a college that was closer because that's quite helpful just being closer to everything so yeah i hope this was helpful for you and yeah let me know if you have any other questions and i'll be back next time with another episode of the t fashionista show boo -boo. let go